Another relative of the puff adder, right down there, is the rhinoceros viper. The rhinoceros viper, that, that's a little bit more vividly colored and, and excellent camouflage, especially with the freshly fallen leaves in the parts of Africa they live. And this right here is the Egyptian banded cobra. They say that might be the one that Cleopatra used to end her days. So that's where they sometimes call it the asp. There's a couple species they call the asp, which would be the Egyptian cobra, which is essentially the same thing as the Egyptian banded cobra. The banded's just banded and bigger. Wow, I'm looking at a weird looking green snake over there. What is it? Over there. Yeah. Those are Baron's racers. It's amazing. Yeah, the Baron's racers, if you come closer too, you can see they have a, what they call a rostral appendage, that goofy thing on their nose. There's two of them in here. And these actually are in the venomous exhibit, but they're not significantly venomous. They're in the same family of snakes as garter snakes. They have slightly enlarged fangs in the back of their mouth that can deliver a little bit of toxin. No different than the garter snake. It's just a little bit more potent. The fangs are a little bit longer. There is no antivenom for this species, pretty much because there doesn't need to be. It's, you're not going to die. Uh, it might, might hurt a little bit, but you're not going to die. They're a, na a snake native down in Latin America, if you can tell they're tree dwelling. And thoughts about why they have that nose, it's really hard to say why they have that nose, but some people think it's because it breaks up the pattern, makes it look a little bit more leaf-like, and it might serve some function that no one's been able to discover yet. And there are egg layers. And eat birds and mice and lizards and all sorts of things. All sorts of things. All sorts of things. What is this? Right here. This is, this is where I was hoping we were going next. The king cobra. This is the longest, arguably the largest, species of venomous snake in the world. This particular one, this is Ty, he came from a herpetologist down in Texas who raised him from an egg. He is extremely, extremely calm. We could probably take him out and hold him, uh, but that wouldn't be a good idea. No. No, we're not going to do that. But he is that calm to where it probably wouldn't be an issue, but we don't want to put ourselves at risk. So No, no, no. I, I would rather not. Thank you very much. And we don't do that here. We, uh -huh. we don't just take venomous snakes out and play with them. That's not no. a good idea. No. But anyway, Ty is, even though he's hiding most of his body in that box there, is about the size of this entire cage. He's, I've seen him touch almost both ends. He's about 11 and a half feet, and the cage is 12 feet. Wow. In the wild, they generally eat snakes. That is, that is the big part of their diet. They'll be eating just snakes. Uh, here in captivity, this one likes to eat rodents. He loves eating his rats. He's not being very exciting right now at the no, moment. No, he's resting. Yeah. That's fine. We don't want to upset him. We don't need to upset we'll him. We'll let him rest. They are some of the, they're, they actually do build a nest. That's one thing that's kind of cool about them. Most snakes are not known for, for building a nest, but the king cobra will Life build a nest. Or egg they, they, they lay eggs, uh, they lay eggs. And they actually nest. They will actually nest, yeah. Now, over here, we're getting into all live bears, because these are all rattlesnakes. All rattlesnakes are live bearing snakes. And these are all throughout the United States, Canada, and sometimes the, well, I don't know if we, well, we have a couple Mexican species in here, too. Uh, this one can be found both in the United States and Mexico down here. This is the sidewinder, one of the smaller species. This is a, a black tail rattlesnake up here. A Grand Canyon rattlesnake down here. I, I can go on and on Different telling you. <laughs> colors. It's and actually, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about these exhibits, talk about when people can come and see them, because okay. I don't want to run out of time. OK, yeah, and we would easily do that if we talked about every single one of these rattlesnakes and we have here. Nancy, if you want to go and take pictures of the snakes while we talk, that's okay. also fine. You got a couple more minutes. Yeah. Okay. So th this facility is open to the public. Yes, it is. It is open. What kind of hours is it open? During the weekdays, Monday through Thursday right now, we are at 2.30 to 5.30. We're open. And then Saturday from 10 to 1. Oh, wait. I'd love to get that. Yeah, from we 10 to... Hopefully we can hear him. And then we actually change seasonally. We're trying to work with the, uh, with the school schedules. So during the summer, we're open from 10 to 1, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 1, on Saturday. And I understand that there are plans to do parties here, that you do very cool parties. We do lots of, we do birthday parties, we do all sorts of different events here. Um, and what we're not seeing that is also here are the raptors outside. Uh, I saw a red-tailed hawk, and the other one was, there, there's an owl out there. 
There's a great horned owl and there's a Harris's hawk. And a Harris's hawk, which is mm -hmm. not an indigenous hawk. That's the, that's the rusty solid brown one, correct? That's correct. They live yeah. down in the southwest. So you can you can see you can see raptors, you can see snakes, you can see amphibians, you can see all kinds of things. There's even a kangaroo that some unwise person thought would make a good pet and then discovered later that maybe he was wrong. So it's found a safe harbor here. Is there a phone number people can call? How can people contact you to get information? Oh, you could call Rob Carmichael at 847-615-4388. There is so much here that we haven't had time to show you. This is a wonderful place for people to come, adults and kids, to learn a little bit about what's in our own backyards, but also throughout the world. Throughout the world, wonderful creatures, incredible things to see. And it's right here. So if you have an interest, and I, I think well, this is another little guy, I think that these creatures are fascinating. If you have an interest, call, find out. You guys are here, and you mm -hmm. show people around. Yep. If you, if you call in advance, we'd definitely love to give tours. This room is usually locked up, so we, we well, do we it all. Be. And we do it on private tours. I bring people in here and they show them all around, show them all the animals, like our ridge nose rattlesnake down there, which is an extremely rare species. Amazing. I have to thank you for taking us through. I welcome. know we're out of time. Even though I haven't gotten waved at or yelled at yet, I know we're out of time. And it's sad because there's so much that we haven't gotten a chance to see. Another day. Another day. <laughs> but I really do appreciate you taking us and showing us. Uh, we are now going to save a pet. We will show you more of the animals that are available there for adoption.